I'm going to share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ball game. I'll walk away from it and this has been like a therapy session. Oscar Bevis, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast's Fight Week. Jordan Gill joins me. Jordan, thank you for giving me some of your time. I know this is interview 1000 of the day, um, and you probably get a lot of the same questions, I bet. Done a few, mate. Done a few. <laughs> oh, I just want to go home. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, good to see you. Um, looking forward to another fight week. If we're going to take it a little bit back and then kind of relate that to now, um, last fight, I don't think anything could top that in terms of drama. I mean, the way that fight ended was spectacular. Um, have you kind of had to tell yourself a little bit that this is a, another big, hard fight, um, and not every fight can be as dramatic as the last? Yeah, you never know. You never say never. But I think, you know... It two, would have to be unreal. Two fights a year might, might be a little bit, uh, yeah, too much to ask for for myself this year. But I don't know. You never know. We'll see. Um, I'm not going to reflect on it too much, but obviously winning that European title, just kind of in terms of the meaning of that and what it meant for you and your career, um, yeah, just kind of the feeling and how that could kick you on. Because obviously, as we know, there's been so many ups and downs and it could have gone a lot smoother to then. So just the feeling of winning that European title that's now yours. Um, yeah, just a little recap on, on that feeling. Yeah, for me, it was massive. I, I always wanted to be European champion. Obviously, you always want to be world champion, but it's a great step on the way. Um, there's something to learn at every level, you know. But won the Commonwealth title, I had great British dust up to box Doyle, Bellotti, um, Jason Cullinan, who was British and, and European champion, and, and you know, they're all good wins, but you know, to step up to European level was, was, was good for me. Um, obviously, I got the win, it was a bit dramatic and, and not what we uh, wanted in that, that fashion, but you know, I've, I've ticked the boxes and I want to fight for world title, and you know, if I want to do that, then I have to beat someone like Kiko. Yeah, in terms of Kiko as an opponent, I suppose people can win any title really and there be an opponent not of perhaps the standard. We've seen people pick up European titles against perhaps people we know they're a level above, but with Guerfi and now Kiko Martinez, it's kind of proven a point as well that not just the title, you want the names to prove that you can back up your ability. Yeah, 100%. You know, Gurphy, five-time European champion. Uh, Kiko Martinez, two-time, two-weight world champion. So um, I could have had an easy defence. I could have, uh, you know, picked someone else. But I didn't. I picked Kiko because of his name and because of his pedigree and because I think I'm going to learn a lot in this fight. And, and I want to progress onto that level. I could have sort of stayed at European level. But I'm, I'm defending the European title. But it's a world-level fight. Um, Kiko Martinez is ranked number eight in the ring magazine and any time you fight a, a top ten fighter in the ring magazine you know you, you're in for a hard night and, and that's what I'm expecting on Saturday. I know obviously he's kind of your enemy this week. Um, just in terms of Kiko, when you look at the longevity um, and the fact that he's coming off a world title defeat, a stoppage defeat and jumping straight back into what for him is obviously a really hard fight for yourself. Um, he is one of them who's kind of like a model professional, is he, Kiko? He, he kind of is one of them that should be admired for, for the way he's taken the sport, I suppose. Yeah, 100%. You look at his career and he's gone everywhere to fight everyone. You, know, you look at the names that he's been in with. Gary Russell, Leo Santa Cruz, you know, Josh Warrington twice, uh, Carl Frampton. Um, he's a legend. He's, he's a legend. And um, I know you say we're enemies, but I like him. I really like him. I, I've followed his career for a long time. and. And he's a fantastic fighter, so yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a big fight for me, it's going to be a big night. When I spoke to Eddie earlier, he said it could be a fight of two halves, he said he knows you're going to be able to hit Kiko Martinez, he said, well he actually said to me, Jordan will pepper Kiko at points in this fight, but he said it's kind of about withstanding the pressure that Kiko's going to bring and kind of that head down sort of surging forward, could it be a fight of two halves, is that how you're looking at it? Possibly, could be four quarters, um, or it might be three thirds. You never know. This is boxing. Anything can happen. And, uh, you know, all I know is it's 12 rounds and uh, maths isn't my strong point. Um, final one. Is this kind of the win that takes you on to world level? Obviously, at the negotiating table, you never know what happens. Um, but is this kind of the win where after this you go, yeah, we move on from the European title now. I am a world level fighter and, and that's it. Yeah, possibly. Um, obviously, we'll see what options are presented to us after this fight. Uh, my sole focus is beating Kiko Martinez and... And uh, that's what I plan on doing. So, for me, this is the IBF World Title Eliminator. Uh, the champion is Josh Warrington, and that's the goal. I want to be fighting for world titles, and I want to become world champion. <laughs>
to share something with y'all. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ballgame. I'll walk away from here and this has been like a therapy session.